Hi, I'm Chef Paul Hayward, and today we're going to be making ladies' fingers. Ladies' fingers is something that a lot of people don't make, but the plan here is to show you how easy it is so you try it yourself. So the first ingredient is egg whites. So we pour that into the bowl. Second ingredient is egg white powder or meringue powder. This is gonna give the egg whites, make it very, very strong so that when we make the mix, it stays very thick. Cause so we pipe it, you'll get a much nicer shape. If you don't have it, you can make without, but your meringue has to be absolutely perfect. We're gonna add the whisk, just giving this a little stir. So the egg whites and the egg white powder is combined. And then we're gonna turn the machine on. Because we've got the egg white powder in, we don't have to worry about whipping on a medium speed to build the strength because the strength is already in the powder. So we're gonna put it onto full speed and whisk. So the egg whites have been whisking now for three to four minutes. It's now getting stiff. Depending on your machine and the speed of your machine, you will have to adjust the recipe. So we're gonna add the sugar slowly. We want the meringue to be nice, fluffy and stiff. So all the sugar is in there. We're just gonna let it mix for about one minute so the sugar dissolves into the meringue and everything is combined. Now it's getting nice and glossy and smooth and basically we're ready to take it off the machine. We're going to take the excess meringue off the whisk. The meringue is nice and stiff and this is exactly how we want it. So if I just give it a stir, it's nice and stiff. So this is how we want the meringue to be. The next stage is we're gonna take the egg yolks. We're gonna pour the, all of those in one time. Small recipes, it's important to make sure you're using every bit of ingredient, right? We just, we're gonna fold this through. Now, if you didn't have the egg white powder in, this will collapse very quickly because you have, don't have the same stability. So we don't have to mix it 100% so it's completely mixed because we're gonna add other ingredients. So the next thing we're going to add now is we're going to add flour. Now we'll add the flour in uh, three parts. So we're just gonna add a small amount, just gonna sift it over the top. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is not only is it making sure there's nothing inside the flour, but it's also lightening the flour. So when I go to fold it now, it makes it much, much easier to mix in. So this is almost mixed. Now I'll add the second part. Again, making it nice and light. So it's like very fine particles and we're just gonna carefully, we're just folding in that flour into the egg white, egg yolk mixture. One last addition of flour. We're on the final stage. So we wanna make sure that everything is folded together, all the ingredients are one. But again, we wanna keep that thick texture because this is what's gonna keep the, the shape of the lady finger. If you mix too much or your meringue is not right at this point, your mix will be very, very runny and it'll be impossible to pipe. As you can see, the mix is quite stiff, okay? I'm working on my own, so easy way, just take a measuring jug, take your piping bag. We have a 16 millimeter size tip, 1.6 centimeter. So I'm just gonna push this inside the plastic container, inside the measuring jug, just to make it easier for me to fill the bag on my own. So we're gonna just take the, the mix, just carefully put it into the bag. Again, we wanna maintain the air, so you don't wanna be squeezing and scraping because that's gonna lose all the air out of the mixture. Again, if you can put everything into your piping bag in one go, it's much better. So we have now a lot of different kind of technology when it comes to silicone. This one is a basically called an air mat. It has perforations in it, but it's made from silicone. Silicone, non-stick, perforations, the airflow goes through this. Now with the special trays from Unox, the air can flow through this and it will cook more evenly. So the lady finger will not only cook, the air will flow all the way through, cooking it quicker and more consistently. So even with a mat like this that's silicone that's non-stick, I still recommend using some pan spray. We're just gonna give it a light coat, just gonna help it release. Then what we're going to do, we're gonna pipe. 
put it slightly about two centimeters above where the, the actual indent is. We're going to let the mix draw into the hole, stop and then pull up. So again, we're gonna let it draw, pull up. Now, a lot of people don't use the piping tip to what it's created for. The reason why we have a size here is if we let the mix drop out of the bag, it will stay the same size as the tip. If we put it on the bottom and squeeze, it can be any shape or size, it doesn't really matter. So again, we're just gonna let it draw, stop, and then up. Then what this is going to expand in the oven, it's gonna fill the whole gap in the mat and it will fill to the right size. Okay, so we're just gonna pipe, stop, pipe, stop. Now you can do this without the mat, but you will see a difference. The next step is we're going to take icing sugar and we're going to sift over the top of the lady finger. The reason why we do this is once it goes in the oven, the sugar will then caramelize and create a crisp exterior on the biscuit, giving it a nice crunchy texture. Also, the lady fingers can be made into different flavors. You can add coffee, make them coffee flavored. You can add spices. So again, use your creativity and take the, this base recipe and make it into many more. So now the lady's fingers are piped and dusted. We're ready for cooking. So what we're gonna do now is program the oven in two steps because we're gonna cook a high temperature and then a lower temperature. So we can start to brown and also to dry out. So I will show you how to do this and then the oven will be on preheat. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the set button. Then we're gonna to go to time. Time is going to be eight minutes. Then we're gonna to go to temperature. Temperature, 170 degrees centigrade. Fan speed, we're gonna go fan speed one. Then we will go to step at the bottom of the screen, which will be the second step. Now we're gonna set the timer for 30 minutes. Temperature, we're gonna reduce from 170 to 130. This time we will leave the fan at fan speed two as we want to re remove the steam that's built up in the oven from the cooking process. Once we hit start, the oven will start to preheat and it'll do smart preheating. It will actually heat the whole chamber, not just the air. Okay, so as you can hear by the sound, the oven is ready. It's time to put the lady finger inside. With the Unox technology, it has something called adaptive cooking. We've programmed the oven basically for one tray. Now, when you do one tray, it's fine. But if you do multiple trays in most ovens, when you open the door, it loses the temperature and it will take time to recover. With adaptive heating, it will basically change the temperature and the time to adjust multiple trays to make sure the final product is perfect every time. Okay, now we're going to make the coffee syrup for the tiramisu. So very simple recipe, very fast. We have water, she's gonna go into the pan. We're gonna turn on the heat to boil, sugar, and coffee. Basically, this is just like making a cup of coffee. Um, sweetness, normally I like to have half the amount of sugar to water, which is a balanced syrup. Some people like it more sweet, you can increase the sugar or you can decrease the sugar. Um, for me, I like it not too sweet, I wanna taste the coffee. All we're going to do is bring this to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we're just gonna allow it to cool. Now, when it comes to soaking the ladies' fingers, if the syrup is hot, they will soak very, very fast. If it, the syrup is cold, it will take a little bit longer. So make sure you remember that when you go to build your tiramisu and soak your ladies' fingers. Friends, you can use whatever coffee you want. You can use a local coffee or an espresso. If you want it stronger, you can do that. You can adjust the sugar according to what you want. Even add spices. For instance, in the Arabic culture, cardamom is a, a taste that we would add to this. But anything you like, you can add to this. So vanilla, cinnamon, cardamom, ginger. Um, this is gonna change your tiramisu completely, but it's a nice to give that customization. The syrup is now coming to the boil. Once it comes to the boil, we're just gonna turn it off and then let it cool down. Okay, so now the lady's fingers have baked and cooled, very nice and dry, so crispy, just like the store-bought ones. We have the hot coffee syrup here. So we're just gonna take a few of the lady fingers at a time, drop them into the syrup. Now, because the syrup is hot, they're gonna soak very, very quickly. 
So you have to be very careful. We don't over soak them because they will just fall apart. So they're softened. They will get soften even more as the syrup absorbs inside. So once they're soaked, we can put them here. Colder the syrup, longer they need to go inside. If you're using store-bought ones, it's, it's gonna be the same, same thing. So again, underneath the syrup. Again, this is personal preference. Some people like them soaked really, really well. And some people like to still have the little bit of crunch of the cookie. So however you prefer to do it. Now, if we go back to the first one, you can feel now it's completely soaked, soft like a sponge. This is why we dry the lady's fingers because we want it to absorb more liquid. Same thing if you make it a bread pudding, you want dry bread so the custard will soak into it. Same thing with the lady's finger. So these are all nice and soft now and ready to go. Okay, so now we're going to make the tiramisu filling. So very simple recipe, but some very, very important information. Okay, first thing, the eggs. These are pasteurized eggs. What does that mean? They've been cooked through the process where they go through pasteurization, which means they're safe to drink or eat without being cooked. So these I could actually drink now if I wanted to, and they'd be totally, totally safe. If you don't have pasteurized eggs, you need to mix the sugar and the yolks together in a bowl, metal bowl, place them over a pot of boiling water, stir it with a whisk and heat it to 78 degrees until basically it's pasteurization. Pour it into the bowl and then whisk it until it's cold. This is the only way. The biggest case of food poisoning in the world is tiramisu is raw eggs. So it's very, very important. Um, for me, pasteurized eggs is the safest, most best way to go. With this, all we have to do is just pour the pasteurized eggs into the machine. Then we're gonna add the sugar. And then we're going to whisk. So we're gonna whisk this until it's white and fluffy and stiff. So this takes about two or three minutes. Different countries have different names. French call it Savion. The Italians call it Zabagaloni. Um, but basically this is the base. Uh, so this is gonna give it the richness. The other two ingredients we're using are whipped cream and mascarpone. So we'll just wait for this to whisk. So now this has been whisking for about five minutes. It's almost white in color, nice and thick, as you can see from here. So now all we simply do is pouring the cream. And then the very important ingredient is a mascarpone. So there's many, many types of mascarpone. You need to make sure you get a good quality. Not all mascarpone like to be whipped. Uh, if you buy some of the mascarpones, where at this point, if you try and whisk it, It'll be much thicker and it will split. So you have to experiment with the brands to find out which works the best for you. So all we're going to do now is close the machine. And then we're going to put it on a slow speed just until it's combined. And then we increase the speed and we're going to whip it until your desired texture. We're looking at it almost a semi-stiff state, so you can almost pipe it. If you go to whisk it too much, it will split. And if you whisk it too little, it will be very, very soft. So again, you can whip it to your desired point, depending on the quality of the mascarpone that you use. When this starts to thicken, it will thicken fast. So don't move away from the machine. Be patient, give it a few minutes. It will start to stiffen and when it does, it stiffens fast. You can start to see the trails into the cream. Okay. Today we're going to basically make tiramisu in glasses. So the cream doesn't have to be so thick. If you're gonna make it in a sheet and cut it, obviously you would like to have it stiffer. But this one now, it's, as you can see, it's quite firm, but it's still nice and smooth and silky. Okay, now it's time to assemble the tiramisu. We have the nice, smooth, silky cream tiramisu mix. We have the ladies' fingers, which have been soaked in the coffee syrup. We have the glasses. We're gonna put the mix into a piping bag. Again, super silky, super smooth. Not too thick, but it's not like soup either. 
I already pre-cut a small hole in the bag. So we're gonna put a small amount of mix in the bottom. Then we're gonna put a layer of ladies fingers. So we're gonna break the ladies fingers into smaller pieces. Now these are not 100% soaked all the way through. I like to have mine with a little bit of biscuit still left. So they're so soaked, but not 100% dripping with the syrup. But this is again, personal preference. So we're gonna place some pieces in the bottom. I like the ladies fingers with the cream. The cream is very rich. So this, the coffee lady fingers really breaks it up. So for me, I like to have a good, a good balance of biscuit to cream. Some people like it really creamy, but for me, that's more like a trifle or something. This is for me, tiramisu needs to have a good amount of ladies fingers. So we're just gonna push that down into the cream. I like to see it on the side of the glass. I think it gives it that nice additional presentation. We're gonna put a thin layer of cream over the top. And then we're gonna repeat with another layer. The ladies' fingers can also be piped into round discs or into a sheet and cut out. I prefer this way because I think if the pieces are broken, it makes it much easier to eat. So we're just gonna again use the spoon, push down slightly, make sure there's no big empty spaces in between the cream and the biscuits, and then repeat again. So just a very thin layer of cream. So again, one whole lady's finger on each one. Then this will be the final layer of cream. So we want to try and keep it as flat as possible. Now we've done that, we're just going to get some tissue. We're going to wipe the edge of the glass with a little bit of cocoa powder. Cocoa powder looks great for presentation, but if you put too much when you go to eat it, straight down your throat. So just be careful. You just want a small amount of cocoa powder for the nice color contrast but not layers and layers. So here we have it, the final product, tiramisu. Ladies fingers baked in the Baker Lux Shop Pro Master, soaked in the coffee syrup, layered up nicely, cocoa powder on top, ready for tasting. Hope you enjoy it.